let's go to that room. This is IBM Power 595. Unfortunately, unfortunately it doesn't have the original batch on the front. Maybe someone has already removed it. It's a type 9119-FHA and it looks like this. It has four books here on the bottom, then there is space for four other books on the top here. Someone has already removed the power supplies, so the overall construction is about the same as the Z9 in the other video. I wanted to show you this machine because the way of inserting and removing the books is very different and quite a bit spectacular. So I wanted to show you that. That's the back side of the books. Some air vent stuff. There is already one fan missing. It has these, uh, these louvers here that shut uh, the opening, not, not to lose any airflow. Then we have four fans, big ones. That's the lower back side of the books. And then there is some I.O. space, I think. There was some uh, disk storage down here, probably. Let's remove one of the books here. First of all, we have to remove the cables. There's no way to make it more massive than that. Solid aluminium. This one is a clamp to push it down into the socket. There is a screw and you turn it. You can see that part here is rising and pushing the book module down so that, is, that it has no way to move. You see it disappears here. And It comes up and I turn the screw here. It's a massive mechanical construction. Very nice, very expensive. Have you ever seen a module like this? Heatsink case in one. Oh, there's a battery. Okay. Could be a clock module. I don't know. Or maybe some setup. It certainly has some Ethernet ports. They are used throughout the entire machine to uh, manage everything. 
Okay, now I have to remove the brackets on the back side. We are here on the back side. There is another bracket that secures the CPU module. I think the only difference between this and the tank is the tank is made of steel and this one is made of aluminum but it is massive like a tank I mean solid material I forgot to remove the two connectors here they go directly to this book module and as long as they are plugged in you cannot remove the book what a strange connector this is to remove the book you need a, a wrench a hex uh, I do say a nut set like this with a long extension. There is a screw underneath here. And when you turn it, you lift the book up and it disconnects from the connector below. Okay. And then you slide it out. Oh no, there is a safety catch here. some airflow okay I'll show you the connector here on this book here that's the slides that's the big connector block here and that's the reason why you have to lift it that way before you can slide it out. Here you can see the lifting mechanism. There is the connector block here with the golden contacts. And that is the, the lift here. That's the screw. When you turn the screw, some elements are drawn towards us and they lift the entire unit up or down and then I think you need the upper unit to push the, the book into that socket I don't know if it's heavy enough to do it by itself or if you if it needs some additional help isn't that beautiful Let's go a little bit closer. I hope there is enough light inside here. could play with that the entire day really and it's all massive aluminium steel uh, bronze bearings there's a, a cover for another book which is not used at the moment this is a book I removed a little bit earlier I have already removed one of the CPUs and I'll show you how that works. First of all, there is a big spring here that pushes the entire heatsink down to the, on the chip. And then there are four small screws that keep the heatsink in position.
there are two hooks on each side one and then we can remove that together with the chip and this is heavy I can tell you it's about one or two kilos it's always difficult to to judge that the same kind of contact this little uh, spring or not spring leaf spring type of contact here on both sides of course Then there are more Torx screws. Well, finally it worked, so that's how it looks. Hmm. It's also quite a nice chip here, with a metal frame. This is glued into the frame. There's also some silicon here, you can see that, a very thin layer, but that's the reason why it sticks so well to the heatsink and the same silicon is between the chip and the metal part here there's another part number uh, you can hardly read it and that's how it looks when it is cleaned you see here the silicon around it, very sticky stuff on the bottom, LGA gold contacts. Another look at that book, CPUs are removed, there is a whole bunch of memory and there is even more memory. Let's have a look how big they are. They are really big and they are 8 gigabytes. Wow, that's a lot. And they have certainly been very, very, very expensive in those days. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 32 of them. 32 times 8 gigabyte, it's a lot of gigabyte. You certainly have a pocket calculator next to you. Uh, I just see that here, where on the back side this uh, transparent door was, there are some huge sockets that go to the entire length of this metal box here 
I have no idea how you could insert a module there because you cannot open the lid here. It's riveted to the frame. Okay, there are some screws. Maybe that could be the answer. Let me try that. No, it doesn't help. It's not made to unscrew. You can lift it a little bit here, but here is it. It is riveted to the, the, the whole chassis, so there must be some kind of lifting mechanism for the modules that go in here. Maybe if someone has a manual, he can tell me that. There is another funny little module and some plugs that look like serial connectors, but I don't think they are serial connectors because it's the same as this one. And that one looks like three transistors and I assume it's some, uh, some temperature sensors. Maybe we can read the type number there. Yes, that's three times an LM60 temperature sensor. They have three wires that go to these connectors. Why they have three so close together? Well, maybe because they want to have a redundancy or they take the average of all three and to get a more precise temperature reading. Don't know. Probably the other connectors are for temperature sensors too. Who knows? There are a lot of option connectors here. Very nice EMI shield here on the front. Honeycomb stuff, metal, aluminium. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, I will remove now all the CPUs and all the copper heat sinks because we will sell the copper uh, separately. It's almost five dollars per kilo and I think one heatsink alone is one kilo or more so yeah it gives a little bit of money return before we scrap that entire beast thanks for watching